I'd like to introduce you all to Ia Komaroa Darren Webb, who you know has been appointed to oversee the operations of all quarantine and managed isolation facilities by the Prime Minister this week. Darren has, has previously been in charge of the coordination of repatriation flights and as such has a good understanding of the huge logistical challenge of repatriating hundreds of New Zealanders every day in the middle of a global COVID-19 pandemic. His new role is Head of Managed Isolation and Quarantine and will be in charge of all isolation and quarantine facilities. This means oversight of all processes within those facilities, including the provision of testing, enforcement of rules, logistical supply chains such as PPE, coordination of relevant agencies, standing up of new facilities, and continued oversight of repatriation flights. He also has accountability for those people who are in charge of each facility. And Darren will shortly detail what actions we have taken in the last few days and what actions we will be undertaking in the next 72 hours to tackle the problems that have emerged in the last few days. I am here today because in the last weeks the, go the government has been working on a plan to transition, to transition the emergency response to COVID-19 to a tightly managed longer term response. From 1 October, the overarching lead and coordination of responsibility for managed isolation and quarantine will shift to the Ministry of Business, Innovation and Employment. Megan Main, the Deputy Chief Executive from MB, will be leading this work stream. MB is a key government agency that has the scale and scope to deal with complex issues and work across other government agencies. The Prime Minister has delegated responsibility for overseeing the managed isolation and quarantine facilities to me. This includes both the current operation of the, of the current facilities and the development of a transition plan, which, uh, which will be um, led between the All of Government Group and MB in a work stream that will be taking place uh, with Carolyn Tremaine and Mike Bosch. As Housing Minister, I already have responsibility for the temporary accommodation service as part of the COVID response, and I have existing portfolios within MB. While our team of 5 million has achieved something very few other countries in the world have achieved in getting to level one with no community transmission, the reality is that we're living in a world where we've seen a, over 8 million confirmed cases and over 440,000 deaths. There are currently 3.6 million active cases of COVID around the globe. It is clear that the virus will be circulating in the world for some time to come. And it is also clear that New Zealand will continue to see cases. There are 100,000 cases being identified every day around the world. And it is obvious to anyone that as New Zealanders um, who, who, have, who have a right to come home into the country, some will be carrying the virus. But it is our job to protect New Zealanders. We must prepare for that and to ensure that our processes at the borders managed isolation and quarantine facilities are robust. This week we have seen that has not always been the case. There have been problems with the implementation of the testing regime. It did not meet our expectations and it did not meet the expectations of New Zealanders. There have been issues with the rigour around approvals relating to testing as well as numerous allegations of those in man managed isolation mixing together. This is, under, this is unacceptable and we have acted with urgency to fix the problems that we have seen emerge. We fully accept that the expectations that we all had about how the managed isolation processes worked have not been working and we have been taking action. The facilities that were fit for purpose in the immediate emergency phase are no longer what we need. We need to move the operation of facilities to having a single point of accountability and responsibility. And that person is Darren. You would have heard today about the plan to ensure that COVID-19 tests that should have been carried out are being carried out. 700 tests 
have been completed today and there is capacity to complete all day three and day 12 tests. The failure in the testing regime is being addressed and Darren's role includes oversight of the facility's processes and ensuring that testing people that are meant to have been tested are carried out. We must be vigilant in preserving the status we have got to as one of only a handful of countries amongst hundreds to the point we have with zero community transmission. Our focus must be on ensuring its entry, the entry back onto a, the the virus's entry back onto our shores is fully contained. And that is why we have moved to ensure our managed isolation and quarantine procedures are solid. There are four facilities, th these are level four facilities operating in a level one world. And we as a government has a responsibility to ensure that these facilities are managed in such a way that any potential spread of the virus is stopped in those facilities. But the people staying in those facilities also have an obligation and responsibilities to all of us. Every single person who wants to rejoin the team of five million has a, has a role to play. Just as we all earned our shift back to level one, we earned it by staying at home for five weeks. We stayed away from our extended families People cancelled weddings, birthday parties didn't happen, and most tragically, people could not be with their loved ones in their final hours or grieve together. We did this to protect each other from the deadliest and most rampant disease we have seen in decades. We earned it by preparing our health system and our communities for the very real uh, possibility that COVID could cause a wave of devastation that other countries have seen and are dealing with. The fact that it didn't happen is owed to our collective hard work. But let me very clear, we cannot guarantee the behaviour of every individual in managed facilities or the quarantine facilities. This is a cross-section of New Zealand society. There are always people who will look to break the rules. But what I will guarantee is that we will have robust systems in place and there will be consequences for people who break those rules. We cannot give up our privileged position of having some of the most liberal settings and open economies in the middle of a global pandemic without a fight. Just as we were in level four for nearly five weeks, anyone coming onto our shores needs to adopt the same behaviours. While all people coming into our managed isolation and quarantine facilities are given information about hygiene and social distancing and are checked daily by medical staff, it is being made crystal clear to them what our expectations are of them. Just as the Prime Minister reiterated many times to all of us through levels three and four, incoming people should act like they have COVID-19. And they should have regard to all the other people who have travelled in from overseas as if they have COVID. Because there is a real, very real possibility that some will do. They owe it to all of us who did the hard mahi to get through those weeks of level three in level four. We need to absolutely guarantee to the nth degree that people joining our communities and rejoining our team of five million do not have COVID. And that's what their isolation period is all about. That is what testing can tell us. And that's why it's so important to get the assurance that testing gives us and to make sure we get it right. And we are determined to make this work because the alternative is unthinkable. Earlier this week, I joined Darren for a visit to two managed isolation and quarantine facilities in Auckland. We spoke to staff on the ground, observed their management systems for processing people through accommodation and were shown around the facilities. We saw people who are among the team of hundreds who are working incredibly hard to manage a very complex operation while also looking after the health and well-being needs of thousands of people every day. I'm now going to hand over to Darren who will outline the actions that we are and have been undertaking. Thanks Darren. Thank you Minister and uh, can also start by offering my sympathies to the New Zealand Police Force today. 
Uh, firstly, I'd like to thank the staff on the ground and the amazing work that's been put in. Recent events have put their work into the spotlight, but it must be said that over 19,000 returnees have been through managed isolation. Our staff in these facilities have done a fantastic job to ensure the majority of these have been completed safely and returned back to their loved ones and friends. These staff have stood at the front line of New Zealand's domain defence against COVID-19 and in the majority have been successful in keeping COVID-19 from entering our communities. However, as recent events have shown, we have not been 100% successful in our management of our isolation facilities and there have been a number of situations that have highlighted this. As mentioned by the Minister and announced by the Prime Minister earlier in the week, I've been appointed as the Head of Manage Isolation and Quarantine. This means oversight of all processes within the facilities, including the provision of testing, enforcement of rules, logistical supply chains such as PPE, coordination of relevant agencies, standing up of new facilities, and continued oversight of repatriation flights. I also have accountability for those people who are in charge of each facility. In my new role, I have today commissioned an end-to-end -end review into the managed isolation and quarantine process from once they have been granted entry into New Zealand to departure after 14 days following the necessary exit protocols and have been assessed as low risk. Leading this review is Commodore Tony Miller from the Royal New Zealand Navy. He is being supported by Andy Milne, Deputy National Commissioner at the Department of Corrections and Senior Sergeant Catherine Gibson from the New Zealand Police. The review team will be looking at end-to-end -end induction processes, general security and the safety of travellers, provision of health services, and standardisation of procedures including COVID testing and screening. This will be, review will be completed over the coming days and a final report will be presented to me next week. There is no doubt that this is a complex matter but it is also the most important part of our collective defence against COVID-19 while we remain in a global pandemic. I understand that every New Zealander will be concerned by what has eventuated and will want to know as soon as possible that our processes and procedures are adequate. I am committed to ensuring we understand what has happened. As the Minister mentioned, we travelled together to Auckland on Wednesday for a site visit at one of the managed isolation facilities and a quarantine facility. Following on from this visit, and as the Minister has spoken to, we already have an understanding of what some of the issues are and have already taken action. The matter of staff and resources is something that I've taken immediate action on. Yesterday I received approval from the Chief of Defence Force for the deployment of additional personnel from the New Zealand Defence Force to double their on-site presence. This will increase defence personnel from 36 to 72 staff, with a number of these people having already arrived at these facilities today. Police's on-site presence will also be increasing, with additional staff in each facility and specifically identified after our support should it be required. These personnel will assist local staff in a number of roles, including ensuring the security and safety of returnees during their time in managed isolation. We know from what we are hearing from these hotels is that there's been issues with people coming into contact with others who have arrived prior to them, sometimes including those who have just arrived and those who are about to leave. I want to be clear, this is not acceptable. And these additional personnel will assist us in ensuring that this does not occur. As the Minister has said, we will have robust systems in place and strong accountability at both the national level through my role and at each of the facilities through a designated on-site operational lead. The Minister and I spoke with these leads earlier today to emphasise the criticality of their role. This includes my expectations and the rigour required in managing the exit process to ensure COVID does not enter our communities through the border. And I'll be following up with a letter to each of these leads on this. Nonetheless, returnees are left in no doubt that individual accountability sits at the core of our collective COVID fight. People must be responsible for their own actions. We didn't require a police officer 
or someone in an NZDF uniform to be on every street corner during the lockdown period, and each New Zealander played their part. We're asking the same of returnees during their stay in managed isolation and quarantine to take responsibility for their own actions and ensure they abide by our rules during their stay. I must be clear, people must take responsibility for their actions and if they choose not to, there are consequences, which may include a $4,000 fine or six months in prison. Also, following the private event that was held at the Pullman Hotel, I have asked for a review of current arrangements with facilities to ensure that this does not happen again. I have determined that any facility being used for managed isolation is not used for private functions. This morning the Minister and I spoke with the Director General of Health on the matter of testing in facilities. He has advised that on Tuesday he has ramped up the testing at facilities for those at day 3 and day 12 of their stay. He has also prioritised the testing for those in the final days of their stay with 927 returnees due to leave managed isolation over this weekend. Of those 927, we're expecting 247 to leave today, 450 tomorrow and 230 on Sunday. As the Director General mentioned earlier today, over 6,000 tests were completed, including those required for returnees coming to the end of their stay. It will be a requirement of each of these returnees that they are considered low risk by the Ministry of Health, which includes the return of a negative test before they can leave. As evident from some who have already left facilities, this has not always occurred. I've made it clear to my staff on the ground that until they've received confirmation of the negative test result, no one is to leave. Finally, I want to address some of the matters that have been raised in the media over the last 24 hours in regards to my own involvement in managed isolation and quarantine to date. Up until the Prime Minister appointed me responsible for the end-to-end -end process of managed isolation and quarantine, including the provision of services for returnees, I had a role in leading a number of different parts of the overall system. This included the facilitation of over 19,000 arrivals from the airports to facilities, managing logistics support including security and safety, managing the walks and outdoor exercise at each facility, and the repatriation of over 62,000 foreign nationals out of New Zealand, such as their domestic travel to major hubs and their departure from New Zealand. I did not have responsibility for the provision of testing in facilities, any exemption applications and the approval process, the provision of health services, or any follow-up self-isolation plans or the assurance of those plans. As I said earlier, my new role now includes oversight of all processes within the facilities, including the provision of testing, enforcement of rules, logistics supply chains such as PPE, coordination of relevant agencies, standing up of new facilities, and continued oversight of repatriation flights. I also have accountability for those people who are in charge of each facility.